Where are you going is quite possibly the most terrifying question that anyone could ask me. Because the truth is, I don't know. I have no idea. I actually have no idea how I got here. <laughs> I recently closed a show that I wrote and starred in off-Broadway. These shoes are actually from that show. This production encompassed a lot of firsts. First play produced in New York. First time acting in my own show. First time playing a lead. First time in a romantic role. First time playing sexy on stage. A lot of firsts. And as you can imagine, many of these firsts were emotionally loaded for me. I had written a play that was basically my ultimate romantic fantasy. In it, the me character, a fast-talking, South, sassy, South Asian American woman, <laughs> finds a partner who loves herself, who loves her for herself, for all her strengths and her flaws, and who can put her first. Since in my real life there is no such person, I guess I wrote what I wished would happen, or what I thought could happen. And acting out one's most desired romantic fantasy on a New York stage can leave one kind of vulnerable. <laughs> I remember shortly after casting finished, I had to do a photo shoot with my co-star, and the photographer asked us to kiss. And as I was about to kiss this actor, who I had only recently met and who I didn't know at all, I thought, I have literally never done this before in my life. And then I thought, is this what white actors have to do? <laughs> before the first kiss with a new person. As artists, we often tell ourselves that we're just waiting for our big break, after which we will have the careers that we always wanted, when it will happen. <laughs> Whatever it is, is often unclear, but most of us are holding out for it. And for a brown girl who, as an actor, has once been had once been told that she wasn't womanly enough to play an Indian woman, oh. and who as a playwright has been rejected from every playwriting fellowship that she has ever applied to, <laughs> this production was that break. Now I had already defied the odds since in the United States, only 3.4% of plays produced are written by women of color. So obviously, this was it. <laughs> I worked incredibly hard. I rewrote the ending three times during rehearsal period. I tweaked the dialogue to fit the individual actors. I learned my own lines and blocking. <laughs> I organized groups to attend the show. I sent out newsletters. I even joined Twitter, which to this day, I still do not understand. <laughs> I invited theaters, casting directors, agents, and for two months, I put everything I had into making this show a success. And then the show closed. And then nothing. The phone didn't ring. Auditions didn't pick up. No one even asked me on a date. I felt no different than before. In fact, I felt like I was starting all over again, staring up a mountain that I had already climbed with nothing to show for it except an embarrassing poster. <laughs> Not surprisingly, I fell into a funk. I found writing incredibly difficult. I had trouble getting up in the morning. 
I considered leaving the theater altogether since all that work seemed to result in nothing or what felt like nothing. Never had the question, where are you going, seemed so ominous, nor the answer more disappointing. One day, a friend pointed out to me that life might not be a set of linear steps. He asked me if it was possible that this experience was preparing me for something else in the future, even if that something else was not chronologically next. I remembered a few years ago when I cleaned out my childhood bedroom because my parents were moving, I found a picture of myself in a manila envelope with a script in it. When I was in middle school, I wrote plays for my spring chorus concert. Basically, it was dialogue that created a story to tie all the show tunes that we would sing together. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time, but I had essentially written the book of a musical, a feat that until recently was deemed worthy of Tony consideration. <laughs> <laughs> the first year I did it, my drama teacher and my music teacher gave me a t-shirt that had my name in iron-on letters on the front, which was a huge deal for someone named Nanda. <laughs> and the word playwright on the back. And I did it for the next two years. And then I didn't write another play for 20 years. In fact, I'd completely forgotten that I had even written these plays until I found that picture of me in that t-shirt. And it made me think that maybe I had been a playwright all along even while that part of me lay dormant. So, who knows where I'm going. Maybe I will leave the theater for Hollywood, where I will write and star in the ethnic equivalent of When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'll wind up some kind of Twitter marketing guru. Not likely, but possible, given my recent mastery of the hashtag. <laughs> or maybe, and I would be lying if I didn't say that I'm really hoping for this one, I will fall in love with someone who will put me first, who will love me for my strengths and for my flaws. Or maybe something will spring from this experience that I could never even fathom. And maybe none of this will come to pass at all. Or maybe it won't come for a really long time. Although for the romantic one, I think sooner is better than later. <laughs> Maybe the only answer to the question, where are you going, is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you.